In today's episode, I want to bring awareness to a very important issue that has happened here in Canada. Recently, a mass grave containing the remains of 215 children, some as young as three years old, was found on the site that was once Canada's largest Indigenous residential school. The school is one of the institutions that held Indigenous children taken from families across the nation. Please join us today as Mohawk elder Daryl Williams joins us to share his perspective, insights, and words of healing at this time of great sorrow. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our show. And normally we just have one episode every week on the podcast. And we wanted to bring in an extra episode here with Daryl because recent discoveries has shown that in Canada, in Kamloops, BC, there was a mass burial site of 215 Indigenous children. And this has been a topic that's come up and been talked about a fair bit, but I don't think nearly enough and not by the people that should be talking about it. Daryl is a Mohawk elder, and I wanted to bring him in. He's a dear friend of both mine and Taya's, and we wanted to bring him in to share his perspective on what's going on and what's happening in the Indigenous community. What are what is required in order to try and heal from this type of trauma? This is a very much a transgenerational trauma, as you will learn. There has been so much trauma that has taken place in the Indigenous culture here in Canada and throughout the U.S. And, and we asked Daryl if he would be able to share his words of wisdom and share his words of healing for his community as well as for the entire nation when something like this takes place. My wife, Taya, had recently read a Facebook post that he had done talking about this specific event. And so we thought that it was really important to have him on here to share his words, being a Mohawk elder and what's actually going on in the community and how do we create healing at this time of great sorrow. So I encourage everybody to stay and really listen to Daryl's words. My wife, Tan, and I, when this first happened, we sat with this for a little bit and we were looking into it and we really allowed ourselves to actually feel what the depth and the tragedy of this event was actually was. And we were both sitting there in tears for a period of time, just allowing ourselves to feel what was actually happened and what had transpired and the depth of it. And through that process, opens up a massive space for love and compassion. And I think ultimately this is something that we all need to do. What you're going to hear from different people is throughout this entire series on trauma is that the part of healing trauma is to actually stay when the dark stuff comes up, to be able to actually see it and feel it in order to transmute it into something else. So please take the time to listen to this and share it. This is the first half of Daryl's episode. I'm going to be posting a second part of his episode next week, which is going to share other words of wisdom that Daryl talked about. And I had to break it up because it was a longer episode and I wanted to focus this part specifically on this event that's taken place with these 215 children. And the second episode will be tied into different aspects of wisdom that Daryl has shared with us that we think is really valuable and important. So. So thank you for staying and taking the time to listen and opening your heart and sharing your compassion. We'll talk to you soon. And we got to know Daryl over this last few months and I uh, feel like we've kind of been connected to Daryl and uh, his good friend Christine as well for quite some time. So we've been really blessed to be able to have made connections with them. Uh, through through Huna Flash, who you guys have probably watched a few different episodes with, we've all kind of communicated through that community. So uh, Daryl was born and raised on the Mohawk Reservation just outside of Montreal, Canada. He began his journey at a very young age, having experiences that he understood as karmic events, which drew him onto the spiritual path. Along this route, he began studying not only Mohawk and Hopi shamanism, but also dove into Buddhism for nine years, where he began to see the world through a different perspective than most people. From there, to mention a few, he had taken on Taoism to light body teachings in Korea, yoga meditation practice, then recently the House of Huna teachings and practices. 
continually building his repertoire of spiritual knowledge, Daryl is one that speaks deeply and confidently of life from a strong spiritual perspective. He sees things plainly and is one to get to the point clearly and precisely. He has been a kind, respectful being of those who have come to him, and his generosity of presence in one's life is immeasurable. Daryl is a true friend who teaches with tough love and guidance. And we couldn't yeah. think of a better person to, to speak with. Daryl, I wanted to read something here that I came across and follow it up with something that you had written on Facebook, if that's okay. So within the series that we're hosting now on trauma, when this story came up, um, my instincts right away was to reach out to you because I, I feel like oftentimes with the events going on with and around our indigenous communities, what the news covers are responses from everyone else w except the native communities. So I knew it was imperative that we actually um, had a person within the native community to give us firsthand feedback on um, what's exactly going on, what the meaning around it is, and what reconciliation uh, could and should ultimately look like within the native community. And, um, and for, for anyone who is not aware of what's gone on, we're gonna just play this short clip maybe. Um, ironically, CNN, which is not, something that we typically watch, but when we were um, looking for a short, concise um, analysis of what's gone on in BC, Canada recently, this was, this did the job. So we'll, we'll start with this clip if that's okay with you and come oh. right back. And then this is just about two minutes and 40 seconds. So we'll just listen to this for a moment together. The discovery is astounding, and so too the anguish, leaving community members and much of Canada reeling. The remains of 215 children, some as young as three, buried for decades on the grounds of the Kamloops Indian Residential School. Their deaths believed to be undocumented, graves unmarked. The Indigenous community in British Columbia calls it an unthinkable discovery, and yet former students of the school, like Harvey McLeod, who was subjected to abuse there, tell us they've thought of nothing else for decades. What I realized yesterday was how strong I was as a little boy. How strong I was as a little boy. And I realized that the people that were abusing me it was one of the largest residential schools of its kind in Canada, but there were well over a hundred across the country. Many, like the one in Kamloops, was run by the Catholic Church and later by the federal government. According to Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Indigenous children were forced to attend the schools, separated from families, and many neglected and worse, physically and sexually abused. And many disappeared. Their families never knowing what became of them. What they were told was that um, when children were missing, that they were told they ran away. And yet the community here knew that couldn't be true. Survivors and families of the missing children were sure a mass grave would be found, but they were unprepared for the loss of 215 souls. It was devastating. It was, it was actually quite mind boggling. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweeted that it is a painful reminder of that dark and shameful chapter of our country's history. The government's own commission says thousands of children likely died of abuse or neglect in these schools. The legacy now is one of intergenerational trauma for many of Canada's Indigenous communities. While the Archbishop of Vancouver and other individual societies have acknowledged the abuse, the Catholic Church has never formally apologized. In 2019, Trudeau agreed decades of abuse perpetrated on Indigenous peoples amounted to cultural genocide. Now, Native leaders say it's time the government step up. 215 pair of shoes are laid on these Vancouver steps. Finally, their souls symbolically are at rest. Paul Newton, CNN, Ottawa. So as is the case with news, we recognize that we only get partial truths. And um, I wanted to also 
share this with you if I could. This was actually somebody on Facebook who had shared this particular story. And I feel like, again, we're just getting pieces of the puzzle that we then try, try to um, understand a bigger picture through. But I'll read the story. I wanted to share my father's story with you to help educate others and bring awareness to a part of our history that was swept under the rug by the Canadian government for well over a century. He told me that he had never told anyone about his residential school experience and that this was the only time he would tell his story because he never wanted to relive the horrors he experienced as a child. As he was recounting his more traumatic experience, he couldn't stop crying and sometimes he would get so angry he would yell out cursing these those priests and nuns for what they did. So we would have to take regular breaks and most of the time as he was telling his story, his hands would shake uncontrollably. This is his story. At the age of four, he was taken from his family home in Muscawis. Am I pronouncing that right? Oh. At, at gunpoint by the RCMP. They came with government papers telling them that all Indian children had to attend the residential school. He said the whole trip there, he cried alongside whole wagon full of native children from his community. Some were in children's handcuffs. He spent 10 years of his childhood from the age of four to 14 being sexually abused by both priests as well as nuns. Children will go to sleep at night crying themselves to sleep because they would be plucked out of bed every night to be sexually and physically abused. They had their hair cut off and would be physically abused if they spoke the Cree language. Some children left and were never heard from again. Roughly 6,000 Native children died in residential schools from disease, beatings, firing squads, malnutrition, electrocution, newborns born of rape by the priests raping the little Native girls who were thrown into the furnace, and those who either froze to death or died of starvation while attempting to run home to their loved ones. It left my father sexually confused and mentally scarred with identity crisis, shame, self-hatred, loss of language and culture, suicidal thoughts, substance abuse, anger issues, and basically all of the isms in the dictionary that led him to doing time in jail when he would try to stand up for himself or others against injustices like racism, inequality, oppression, etc. It literally ruined his life and so many other Native survivors who suffered similar abuses and in doing so extended negative cycles of abuse, dysfunction and traumas throughout our communities that will affect us for generations to come. The residential schools took the children from the land to disconnect people from their culture in order to take the land from the children. The genocide is ongoing we still see the constant removal of indigenous children from their ancestral lineages. One of the worst and most powerful things on this earth is the look in a mother's eyes and the pain she experiences when she has that which she loves most in the world taken away from her. It leaves mental scars, trauma we can never forget. It destroys lives, it destroys the families. It is a form of cultural genocide and it happens way too much in our communities. We need to recognize this as a form of oppression and as a calculated effort by our colonizers to create dysfunction within our communities to maintain control of the land and exploitation of natural resources. If anyone thinks this native that Native people are marginalized today. 60 to 70 years ago, white folks treated Natives infinitely worse and strong Native men like my late father had to stand up against such injustices, yet they would be blamed for something white folks initiated, instigated and perpetuated. Our ancestors have endured so much injustice from invasion, genocide, attempted extermination, racism, colonism, forced assimilation, abuse of all kinds, hatred, made outcasts on our own lands, looked down upon by the people of other races, etc. since 1492 at the hands of the invaders, and we are still here. 
my father used to tell me a lot of the negative things that went through in his that he went through in his life, but he never let them beat him. And he made sure his children were not exposed to such things. Thank you, Dad, wherever you are, for all that you did and for being strong for so long. The harm done to survivors, their children, families, communities, and future generations is immeasurable. I pray for him and all survivors of these residential schools so that they may find comfort, justice, healing, and those 6,000 plus children who perished in the residential school systems are in a better place. Hi, hi. Okay. So I, I feel your, your emotion, Tia. And when I hear something like that, of course it, it sparks up emotion because I can tell you firsthand what was going on. My three of my brothers were in the residential schools. My older brothers, they were taken from my mother. You see, when I told you about the creation story the other day, we always go back to history to the beginning. Why there's a light and a darkness on the planet. Some people choose to evolve with the dark. We have to accept this, but we have to protect ourselves from it. We have a matrilineal society. In their native culture, the women are the backbone of our culture. We know this. Right within our law, it states the women own the land. A man and woman are married, the woman owns that land. Men don't own nothing. You see? They bring the kids up. They take care. They're the backbone. They take care of the men. They take care of the babies. They do it all. You know, men do their part. But women are to be protected no matter what. When a woman's babies are taken, so how is this dark force going to get to our people? Because we were so strong. We were strong physically, mentally, emotionally in war. The five nations were so strong and all native nations, we had that. That's why we existed so long. But for them to break us down and to break the spirit they got to the woman, you know, you break the woman, take her kids from her. Mm -hmm. So this is what they did. This is how the dark works. So I seen this in my mother. Of course, me growing up and hearing, because I was the youngest, I'm the baby of everybody, so my three older brothers were in these residential schools. I learned only when I grew up later on. So they were taken when they were five, seven years old, eight and gone for quite a while, years. So they endured trauma. My brothers, uh, you know, one of my older brothers, well, two of my brothers are passed on, but there was five boys. Two of them are gone. But one of them that was in the residential schools, he had a, a really uh, dysfunctional life. My other brother's still alive that was in there right now. He's, he's 76 years old. He's still alive. But his is dysfunctional. He doesn't even come hang out with the family. He'll come. He's so nervous. He walks around all night in his house. Two, three, four in the morning. He's walking around. Because he's got this trauma. He's been carrying 70 years. Okay? My mother would sleep on the couch because she worried, right? Waiting for her babies. So I seen this. I grew up with that. I, I see my mother, because I was the youngest one, 
she told me things that she never told my other siblings. I tell them stories. They said, Mom never told us that. How is she going to tell them that? She was too busy. You have eight kids. She was working day and night. But you know, when your mother's hurting. And I seen that. I seen her pain. And she lived it every day. See? Because she would blame herself for her babies being taken. It wasn't her fault. So, this is the dark going after cultures, to defeat the cultures. So, but we had to survive. We had to get through it. My cousin was in, in there. He, they took him when he was six. And he told me a lot. My brothers wouldn't talk about it. One was serious, drinking all the time, living a wild life like you wouldn't believe. You know, he would do many crazy, crazy things. He was a genius, one of my older brothers. He was, could do anything. But he had this trauma in him. And my cousin, he, uh, he told me what the priest would do to him. And they all went through this. He said, I was six years old. They used to molest him. He says, when I turned 17, he says, I was six feet tall. He says, that priest that used to molest me, he says, one day I got him by himself. And he says, I beat him to a pulp. He says, I was trying to kill him. He said, I don't know, I left him on the, on the floor. He says, I jumped out the window. And this was far from here. It's in Ontario. He says, I went through the bush. I ran away and I came back to Ganawagi. He ended up at my mother's door. That's my mother's nephew, my cousin. My mother took him in. Okay. He was there 11 years. So we know about all this. I mean, we, you know, it, it is home, of course. In the heart, right? But these things we have to heal. We have to heal from them. And we have to have a foundation so strong and our spirituality so we can help the people to get through it. We had a meeting the other night and people are they're crying. There's a woman crying. They were molested right here on the reserve in the church with the nuns and there was a, there, there was a, a place where the nuns used to live. And right in the school, we call it Cattery School, in the basement. My friend was taken in there when he was six years old. The priest molested him. There's many of them. So the people are going to take, they want to take these buildings down and destroy the church. The priest that used to molest the children, they buried him here, the Christians. They buried him in front of the church. So they're going to dig his body up. You see, we have to come full circle. So there's going to be, we have to do this. We have to have this cleansing, this healing, this uprising. So people are saying, we had people from the band council that came here, so-called chiefs and metal and an arm of the Canadian government. So they showed up at the meeting. Right. Can you repeat that again for people who are not familiar? So you're saying that the, the, the what did you just call them, the band leaders? It's an elected council. Mm-hmm. I call it a colonized council. It's 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 forced upon us by the Canadian government. It has nothing to do with our traditional system. We have our own system of governance, but the government doesn't want to accept that. Because we're too strong. So there was a couple of them at the meeting, and um, they were asked, where's the other band council? There's 12. There's 11 right now. And they told the people at the meeting, well, they're afraid to come here because they're Christians, right? And they know what's coming. But we don't want to fight with our people. They need to know the truth. I said, once they learn the truth, it's going to set them free. How can you accept, continue on accepting something like this when it's 
killed your people, murdered, raped your babies. And the 215 is nothing. The 6,000 is nothing. The number is very, very high. It's over 50,000. We don't even know how much. They found 28 mass graves. There's more than that. We know that. So we were being exterminated. And it was a mass genocide just with children, with babies. Imagine that. This is how evil. This is how evil the situation is. You know, they came here with a Bible. They used to say to our chiefs, you accept this Bible, or you're going to die. And the chief says, we're not accepting the Bible. They tied them up and ripped them apart with oxen, ripped their limbs off. And these are the Jesuit priests who order this with the military. You see? There's horrific things that went on. There was pregnant woman. Eight months ready to give birth to us. They were killed. Babies cut out of them. You see? People don't want to know the truth. Maybe in government don't want to know the truth. But they're going to know it and they're going to hear it. We don't want their apologies. We don't need it. What we want and what's going to happen because we've come full circle like I told you. This tree, it's nation to nation when we made it. So we're going to live nation to nation with respect for each other. If they're not going to do the right thing, you see our people respect life and honor life. This is what it's all about. Mother Earth is going through heavy duty transformation, right? We work in harmony with the Earth. We don't want to see harm come to nobody. But I know our people have spiritual powers because we know things. We can do ceremony with hundreds or thousands of us and we can create problems on the planet. We don't want to do this. We can create earthquakes. We know that. We have societies, snake societies. They work with the earth energies. The grandfathers I told you about. And Daryl, do you think, because most people are not aware of this, and, and what's coming to light now um, with the, the deep state, the cabal, the rituals, yeah, you know, all this sort of, sort of stuff, I think it's going to shed light on our fuller capacity as creator beings that we are. And, and with that starting to come to light, and whether people choose to accept that or not, that's totally up to them. But nonetheless, it is coming to light. Do you think then the dark forces were aware of this? And as far as the powers and the wisdom that the Native communities had already tapped into and were fully aware of? And do you yeah. think part of the reason as to why the Native communities were even targeted, aside from the land. Yes. Yes, they knew, they know who we were. They know who we are and what we're capable of. And, you know, but we choose not to go that way because when, when you go for revenge, and even in war, in our, in our great law of peace, there's, there's wampums for war. And when you're at war, you have to Think of peace, because that war's got to end, right? You can't make it worse. It's only when it gets to a, you've exhausted all avenues to try and create peace, and we've done this so many times. When you're up against a dark force, sometimes you have to go that way. And right now, we're in a situation where we want this resolved, and when we're so happy, the world is seeing this. So we're getting support from everybody. We're, look, look what you are doing. You're bringing this to awareness to many people. See? It's on the news. So it's a good thing. So Canada, the Canadian government's got to do the right. The American government has to do the right thing. We can't guarantee they're going to. But like I said in the beginning, karma comes full circle, right? It's coming. It comes to national. It comes to nations. So the karma's coming back. And somebody has to either balance out this karma 
or, or somebody has to pay for it, you see? And that's where we're at right now. These are spiritual teachings. We understand this, you see? And another thing you mentioned to us um, when we spoke with you last off air is that um, the story about the queen and, and, you know, a lot of people I think are not aware of that piece of it, but you yeah. had mentioned a, a, an important point that I just wanted to touch on here as well. Would you mind mentioning that again? Yeah. Well, that story goes on when she went into uh, the residential school, you know, Pam, British Columbia, her and her husband, and they have taken 10 native children from there, 10 babies on a picnic. And they never returned. So they took them kids. They're never seen again by their friends or by their family. So we know where they went and what happened to them. You see? They, they became a game to them. And we've heard of the queen being tried in court, but it never went anywhere in Europe. So we're waiting for this to come to uh, come to the light and, and the truth has to come out with everything now. You can't you can't hide anymore the truth because Mother Earth and our whole solar system is going we're going to a part of the galaxy where it, it, it purifies and everything has to come to light. The karma whether we like it or not, it's it's got to be, it's got to come to the light. So they have to understand this for their own good. Okay? They need to heal themselves. They don't have to tell us we're sorry, because that, we want action, right? We need a. There has to be a partnership here. They're taking the resources from Mother Earth, and and we made deals with them to share the land, but they're not doing their response. They're not putting up their end of the deal. Yeah. They don't want that. It's just a total control and domination. So healing comes <laughs> in many, many forms. I mean, you know, we hope and wish and pray that the Canadian government, the U.S. government is always going to do the right thing. And, and we can have peace and harmony and a good, a good harmonious balance to life with each other. It hasn't been that way for five centuries. It's still not that way today. But we know where we are. We know where we are in our timing of, of this transformation. And we're so close now that we can't get caught up in the anger of all this. It's sad. It's so sad. It's it's devastating to hear this kind of stuff. See, like I said, we've known about it for a long time, but we've lived through it. So, but a lot of my people are just hearing about it, right? Like I told you, the colonization has gone so far. You forget who you are and what you come here for. So, we're trying to re-educate people, and. So hopefully we can heal and heal as much people and, and work together in harmony and balance. And hopefully the Canadian government heals too, you see? They need a lot of healing because what is, what is coming to the forefront for them now it can't be avoided. We're not going to let it go. You can't let something like this go. One of the reasons why we wanted to talk mm -hmm. to you and why even, even we felt it was really important for even, even Taya to share that story is it's like, and for so long, it's like, it's, people don't want to look at the, this dark stuff. And, and I get it. I, I get not wanting to. Or they label it with like, you know, due to racism. And so that label in itself Create something different that it's not actually about. It's not capturing at all the essence of what's going on. Why we felt that it was important to even share some of the story from the limited amount that we can even um, contemplate is because we did this the other day. We, we sat with the feeling of it 
Um, and this is a part of what's coming up in this trauma series from many different people is we need to be able to, in some ways, as, as Sarah Salter Kelly talked about, go into the underworld. You have to be able to actually feel to some point and, and take an honest look at what's happened. And some of this stuff can be so atrocious to even hear that it's easier sometimes to just turn and almost pretend it didn't happen or to not allow it to touch us and, and touch our humanity on some capacity. And, you know, the other day, Tia and I were, as we were sort of talking about wanting to speak with you and going into some of the information a little bit and just sat for a moment to allow it to touch our heart. And I mean, we both just break down into tears for a bit, but that's, there's a healing that comes out of that. It's like we had mentioned to you earlier, there's, it's not to, not to say this stuff to kind of freak people out. It's, it's like, this, this really is, this is real. You need to be able to, in some capacity, touch the sadness and the pain and allow your heart to experience it so that you can actually transform that into compassion. And then that's, that's Sharing where the humanity. Well, that compassion is what starts to heal that that's ultimately what's going to heal you and then collective compassion starts to heal the world. Yeah. So from from your perspective, Daryl, like, what are the next steps? What are, what are the next steps for your community? What are the next steps for the world to start to heal? Okay, what we need to do is first, we have to, there has to be a, a unity, right? We need to unify. So we're working on our unity here on, in our territories. Then we have to create unity with, like I said, with the governments. There has to be a unity. So they need to understand and accept that truth, like you said. But as this is coming to the forefront with us, because we know this is what's going to come eventually. It has to, everything has to come. But we're not the only ones. You have, just in the United States, I think there's 800,000 children a year go missing. And worldwide, it could be around 2 million, million and a half. It varies. So they're taken every day, babies, all over. What's going on? People need to know this, right? Why are they taking the babies? What are they doing to them? So there's something going on on the planet. There's, there's this entity on the planet that's trying to do something, right, with the children. So it's destroying the life of families, women. So we have to bring that to the light. That has to be stopped. And sometimes it has to be stopped in a physical way. And this is what's going on right now. I mean, we hear a lot of stories about the military doing their job in the U.S. Beautiful. Do it. And they're working with militaries all over, even in Canada. This has to stop. No matter what it takes, it's got to stop, right? You can't have this continue on. Until this stops... We're not going to have that unity in world peace. We can unify in small groups. So we have to look at the, the whole planet, the whole world to heal, not just natives. Because like I said, we see the world view what the peacemaker brought to us. It's for the whole world to be in this love consciousness and, and working together as a, in harmony. And, you know, we look at how, how can it happen? We have nuclear bombs. We have wars, armies. It's, it's, it's possible because of the time we're going in. You see? Change is going to happen fast. We know that. It's going to happen fast. When we do ceremony, we ask for that. And everybody needs to do that on the planet. I was talking to Christine last week. I says, maybe Tia, you can work with her on this. I think it would be great coming from the woman. We can do a worldwide ceremony mm. and put it out there throughout the whole internet. And everybody on the planet can tap in and do their ceremony on that, on that day mm. to bring about change on the planet. Uh, peace, love, harmony, unity for everybody. No matter where you are, 
we can put it out and we can reach imagine millions of people doing the ceremony together it's powerful we'll create it we'll, we'll put into that grid around mother earth it'll be so amazing you know we have groups doing this all over the buddhists the Tibetans, the mayans they're doing it they're doing their work but if we all do it together it's at 12 o'clock your time and then in china it's 12 o'clock they're doing their ceremony it doesn't matter all over the planet at different times we can do ceremony together, meditate, pray together, take half hour, 15 minutes, whatever they have. And coming from the woman, that would be amazing. If you would like to do that. Yes, but, make it happen. Yeah, you can make it happen. I know you can do that. And um, that's one, one way we can start healing in a big way, right? Mm -hmm. The jump start. So we can jump from A to Z. We don't have to go to, you know, all this. Well, we, we want things to happen fast now, right? We, there's no time for playing games. And, you know, let's, let's move and be the spiritual beings that we're here. Let's tap into that and be free. You know, Daryl, at the beginning of this pandemic, I, the first question that came up for me, um, it was an urgent one and a big one of needing to find the spiritual context of what it is that we're going through because yeah. none of it made sense otherwise. And mm -hmm. then following that, I had the intense urge to move out of Ontario. I had then the longing to connect with the native community. And yeah. even coming here, I reached out to Jason's family who lives here in BC. And I asked them, how do, how do I connect? How do we connect with the native community? And she had her own ideas of like, well, go and study the, the history and go to the museum. And I'm like, no, 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 we don't have time for that. <laughs> this is urgent and it needs to happen now. And lo and behold, Kuna came <laughs> up. And, and the first time I saw your picture as well as Christine's picture, there was an instant I need to reach out to them. I love them already. There's a connection there. And here we are having this conversation. And lo and behold, like I feel like everything that you're speaking of is so profound because it's so we are talking about the details, right? As far as how we're seeing it in our current reality. But there's this constant overtone of the spiritual context of the mm -hmm. bigger picture of uh, the grand picture, which we have not even considered necessarily for so long, because it just hasn't been in the Western culture to view yeah. the world and our reality from that larger, from that grand perspective. So then we get lost in the details of it. We get confused. We, get, we become doubtful. We, uh, we give away our power because, again, lacking that spiritual context. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Well, and you also, Daryl, you bring back two of, I think, the foundations that are the most important in healing. And you can see this across lots of cultures that have, that have got a depth to them. It's, it's ceremony and community. Mm -hmm. And it's in the process of ceremony, which often incorporates community. And the ceremony connects the different layers up. You know, you connect the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual. All of those are present in real real ceremony. So I feel like when you're talking about going from A to Z, it happens a lot faster, I think, when you connect those pieces up in that way, and you create a, a field or a space for, for real significant healing to occur. You see, especially if you're working with the elements, mm -hmm. we make a sacred fire, and we use the sacred tobacco. So when, when we burn tobacco in the fire, the spirit of the fire communicates with us, right? We're mm -hmm. channeling the fire. So it's talking to us, right? That's amazing. So we love that. It's dancing. The fire is always moving, so it's teaching us how to live our life. Keep moving. Be flexible. Don't be rigid in your mind and your body, you know? Be flexible. And, and the trees are like that. They teach us, right? They're blowing and they're, they're flowing. And they release. You know, the leaves, they let them go where they're healing. <laughs> And they rejuvenate. So nature teaches us. Mm -hmm. So let's work. You know, and, and I'd love to, to see that millions of people doing ceremony on the planet on the same time. I mean, we'll, sort of, we'll create so much healing for each other. It's amazing. 
It'll be, you know, it's like fireworks, lightning bolts and going off all over. It'll be amazing. You know? <laughs> I, I think the great spirit Mother Earth will like be in ecstasy for that. It, it's something that's much needed. You know, all, all in the same territory. That would be amazing, right? And not we're all singing and dancing together, right? That would be, you know, I've been in ceremonies and it's, you know, with hundreds of people. They're all dancing. What a vibration, man. I mean, it just brings it to another level, you know. But it's been so long since it's been like that. Because everybody, everybody's minds are scattered. It's like a bowl of spaghetti. I told them the other night. Everybody, you can't be like spaghetti. We're all over the place, all mixed up. We got to focus, right? We got to focus on what we have to have an understanding somewhere. We have to learn the history. See, like Tia, you said, you got you could learn history. It's good, but nowadays we have to do things. In, in a more balanced, and we need to do things faster. We don't have time to go and go through all this because everything is speeding up now. So we can jump from A to Z and, and learn the details later on. We'll get the main aspect, the main points of everything, and focus. You know, I told them the other night, we have so many laws, so much... Right in our great law, there's many wampums, 100, 1920. I said, break it down into one, just one word, the whole law, it's love. You know, the Canadian Constitution, American, you know, it's all rules. Guys, you got to, can't do this, can't do that. And we have to in treaty. You have to because there's people there that are, they're bad. They're not good people. So they, they need to be controlled and contained. Mm -hmm. There need to be guidelines here in this dimension because we, you know, people go out of control, and even intelligent, so-called intelligent people, are, are their minds get crazy on the ego, you know. They got crazy toys on the planet, right? <laughs> so we need to come back to that, you know, and the, the essence of who we are. I mean, Huna talks about, you know, the first Lemuria, and, and I said, wow, 550, that's mind-boggling. So as Lemurians, we don't fool around when we say, I will see you later, right? Mm -hmm. So we came here that in in our star family form, you know, we were giant beings. Many of us were fourth, fifth, sixth dimensional already. So that is phenomenal when you think of timing, right? So how can you can comprehend you know, 50, 500 million years? It's mind boggling. It's like if you contemplate it too much, you might go cuckoo. <laughs> it's, it's too far. It's too much, you know. So we got to keep it simple. We're here and now. And, and let's work with each other and, and do ceremony. You I, see, that's how we evolve together. You, you do ceremony, it raises the vibration. You start singing, you know. I love singing. I sing to the sun. You got the drum. And then you feel the vibration. And your cells start dancing, you see. And everybody starts moving. It's nice. Mm -hmm. You're working in harmony with Mother Nature. So you're working with the flow, with the waters, you know, you're working with the wind. Mm -hmm. And you're you're as one with nature and creation. That's what we need to do. Mother Earth is just waiting for us to ask her for that guidance and that help. And she'll give it to us. She gives us life every day. Look what's going on with Mother Earth. We're destroying the water. We're destroying the air. And we still wake up and the sun's up and she's giving us life. And then our other brother, the sun, is still there. They love us so much. Mother Earth's a living entity. And she's taking this abuse because her kids are bad kids on the planet. We, we go to dumb in the mind. Why? Because we went to sleep again, right? We think it's fun. It's a big party here, right? We got fancy this, fancy that, cars. And I'm not saying it's not a, It's not nice to have nice stuff. I have a home. I have nice stuff. I like to get nice stuff. But we have to live in harmony with nature, you see? And teach each other how to keep that natural balance with ourselves. We're born into this. We're born into the artificial intelligence. We're born into colonization. 
But when we know about it, I love what Huna said, you could be there but not be of it, right? So your consciousness is in a different state. So that's what you're vibrating at. So when you're vibrating at that, you can bring the world back to that. Mother Earth will come back to that. If we do ceremony on the planet with millions of people, say if we had 7 billion doing it, you're going to heal the planet overnight. The waters would heal. The Earth would heal. You see the ozone cone closing up. It would do it. She would listen to us. But everybody's got to be on the same boat. You can't go back and start destroying the water and the planet the next day again. See, the consciousness of humanity could be very powerful if we tap into it. Mm -hmm. And she'll, she'll, it's, it's like, these are parents, your children. You got beautiful children, I see them. <laughs> They're so sweet. Sure, they get a little naughty sometimes. But when they say, Ma, Daddy, I want something. Don't you want to give it to them and help them? Nah. Because you love them unconditionally. That's what Mother Earth wants to do for us. Right? She wants us to have a pristine planet to live on. You know, we can go drink the water right out of the rivers. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. And it can come to that. Yeah. Or we're going to have to maybe shift dimension. Mm -hmm. Not maybe, but I know we have to. <laughs> We can't stay in 3D. Mother Earth doesn't want to stay here. So we're moved into right at the first level of 4D right now. That's a stepping stone. We need to jump, jump, jump. Be like a grasshopper. We got to jump fast now. We got to go. And then we got to have wings and fly. See? We got to go up higher in consciousness. Fourth dimension, that's stepping stone, fifth dimension. Everybody's always talking about these fifth, fifth, fifth. Okay, well, you got to integrate something. You know, we're in baby class here right now, so you have to get get through this baby class fast. You have no time. It's coming fast. Daryl, how I've understood it from the pieces that I've looked at as far as our humanity's exper experiment that has gone yeah. on is yeah. we decided to, at one point, venture and separate from source and have that experience and yeah. at that point we've gone as far away from source as is conceivable and then there's divine intervention right now and so we're we're being called back home to return to source is yeah. that is that how basically how you see it and even like when you're when you're speaking of ceremony i feel like these are all um, aspects to be able to return to that state of oneness, to that state of being connected to source. Yeah, the, it's like that, exactly. But we have to, you see, as humanity, we go and we evolve to a certain place. And then we all, it's when we start allowing um negative things to go on and don't don't rectify it, right? We allow. We say, oh, that's them. It's not us. You know? It's them, those Chinese, them, them Russians, Americans, ah, whatever. It's them. The natives, whatever. It's only them and their babies. It doesn't matter. This is what humanity does. It's not affecting us here. Got a big earthquake over there. Oh, it's not here. We're happy. <laughs> so, we have to look at this and, and when there's situations on the planet, we have to stand up and make that change and say, hey, wait a minute, there's something not right here. We can't allow this to happen. But this is what happens because you have so much varying degrees of consciousness on the planet. But we're coming full circle now. So we're, I believe... There's enough on the planet right now that has come to a higher state of, of consciousness that we can shift the planet. Mm. Okay, there's maybe 7 billion sleeping, but there's many millions awake. And, and, and the numbers do an amazing thing. 
Because don't forget, it's not only you and Jason and me. We're connected to our souls, our spirit, and their families, and their star families. So it gets multiplied every time we do something, every time we do ceremony, every time we meditate, we pray, and we communicate and talk like this. Mm-hmm. They're all bombarding the planet and saying, hey, we're waking up. So they're giving us more light, more energy, more love, right? That comes from the source. So the more we can speak our truth, and don't be afraid to speak our truth. No matter what, I'm going to make fun of you. Too bad. You tell them. I tell them anyways. You have to. Because you're planting a seed in there. If their mind is not in a good place and they're talking negative, you put the truth in there. So when they're alone, that seed you plant is going to, it's going to, oh, it's going to be in the back of their head reminding them. So they're going to think twice about doing something, right? You know, Daryl, you, you, this is something we talked about with Huna at one point too, when we were talking about in order to start to create some change, the, the, the stepping stone that eventually people have to hit mm-hmm. is that layer of courage. And yeah. from Dr. Hawkins' work in the map of consciousness, that's at the level of 200. And 200 is when you start to shift to more pro-life versus anti-life. So part of, part of courage is to accept responsibility, not blame, but respect, accept responsibility for life and then have the courage to sort of act from that place. We, we think about that a lot when, when Huna talks about light and action and what that means. And the other thing that's really important to think about when, when you were mentioning with consciousness is that consciousness is, is not just this linear sort of thing. It's, it's a logarithmic type of a scale. So when you move into higher states of consciousness, it's why you don't have to have the entire planet to all be at a certain state to shift things. You can have a small group at a higher state of consciousness that will raise the level of the sea for everyone. Yeah, exactly. You see, every time you talk, you bring stuff out of me, the two of you and Tia. So this is what we do. We communicate and then it activates something of us. Not just from this life, maybe from past life energies, right? Because everything is intertwined. We're all floating through one time and space. So, you know, it just reminded me of the Mayans. And the Mayans, they worked ceremony so much on the planet. And, and the non-native people, the white people, they say, they disappeared off the planet. Nobody, they didn't leave a trace. And that's true. They, they went up into the fourth dimension. That's where they are right now. There's Mayans still on the planet. The ones that were doing ceremony. They were taken up. They were taken up in ceremony. So if we do ceremony and, you know, we disappear, that's a beautiful thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can go into the next dimension. This is reality. This is reality, you see. We have to understand and believe this because I know it's true. Okay? Not just from the mind. You see, I know. Well, I love that you're speaking of this, Daryl, because, you know, it might be new uh, information to a lot of people, but having um, witnessed and and tuning into um, the Native community this past while, this is common knowledge in your communities, and it's and it's so it touches such a, a deep place within my own knowingness, and even without intellectually ne- necessarily understanding mm-hmm. or having the the memory within my personal lifetime, I can resonate so deeply with the truth of what it is that is being conveyed through the words and the stories that you, you speak of. So the other night when we had our meeting, um, there was a woman there. There were some traditional woman, and they were going through their healing because they were abused. There was one 82-year-old woman, and she's been an activist all her life in the community. So... They're saying, how do we do this? I says, woman, go and wake the men up. Wake them up. Shake them, do something. It's the women that are going to heal this planet. Right? Then they get the men. Hey, wake up. Come on, do your job. Men fell asleep. Became weak, right? So we got to wake up and work together as one. So the women do that. You know, that's, that's women. Women do this. 
Come on, do something. We do this, do that, you know. The women make this change in men. And that's why I told them, you have to wake your men up. Go to your family, wake your sons up, wake your husbands up. They're not here. We had about maybe 25 men at the meeting. You know, it's not enough. <laughs> people are afraid to come and meet together because they're afraid what other people are going to think of them. Mm. You see? That's, 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 that's going on theme. everywhere. It's, I, I feel like there's so many people that want to speak up because they don't agree with it, but they're afraid that they're going to be um, outcasts. They're afraid they're going to be pointed at in a certain way or thought of in a certain way, judged. All, all of that stuff is coming up. And, and I think that's, again, why the word courage comes up, because we have to get to that level to start to see our lives change. So when a woman start moving in action, in that light in action, it's going to make a big change. I know it. And the men are there. They're going to work together in harmony and balance than the children, you know, or we all do ceremony together. It's going to be amazing. So we can evolve faster and wake up the planet faster. Well, I think stay tuned because we're going to try and figure out a way to make this. Um, yeah, don't make it happen. The ceremony happen. So I, I've got this picture where I can see actually people sharing videos of their personal ceremonies that they were doing at that time. And uh, I mean, it, it's, that stuff can be done. I mean, we created something on a very small scale like that from, from a book that I did called Letters That Move the World, Intentional Acts of Gratitude. We created a focused moment for positive change. But this has such a, mm. this has such a, a unity energy to it that's, mm. that's really quite profound. So let's, uh, we'll brainstorm on that and we'll, we'll figure out how to make that happen. And then... Um, sure. And, so and, you know, people listening, stay tuned, and we will pass that out. If you would like to be a part of that too, reach out to reach us. out to us. Leave comments um, because once it goes, we're going to need your support on spreading that message out so that we can get that to as many communities as possible. It's definitely going to be a collective effort for sure. We, we can um, choose a special date, like say the summer solstice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, powerful time because mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's a renewal time. Mm -hmm. okay. That's one, you know, I know we're in Mercury retrograde right now. We're so, doing pretty good for Mer yeah. Mercury retrograde. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of people are in chaos, but, you know, it's all about vibration, right? <laughs> Where you're at. So I, I think we're, we're going in a good direction to the planet, you know, because we've avoided a lot of negative stuff that we we're supposed to. There's a lot of the good people on the planet doing the work. That's why, you know. I know my sister and brother, the Hopis, are in ceremony almost every day. Mm. Yeah. You go there, they're, they're probably in ceremony. It looks like you're going back 10,000 years. They <laughs> dress up with all their clothes on and they're in ceremony. They're dancing, they're singing, you know. It's beautiful. You go on the ground with them in the kivas and it's, it's powerful, you know? Mm. you know. I took Christine, we went to the snake ceremony. They're dancing with the snakes. Uh -huh. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm. So, Whatever way people do their ceremony, I mean, don't go dance with snakes anymore. <laughs> 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 but whatever, whatever you incorporate, like incorporate song, you sing to great spirit, sing to Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. what, what can we give to the great spirit? What can we offer to the great spirit? Great spirit is everything, has everything. We're just the children, so we offer our love in song, right? We sing and dance. So, and then energy, energy is brought to a heightened level. Yeah. So. Um, I think that's beautiful. We'll, um, we'll brainstorm on that one, Daryl, and yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, do we'll that. Start to make that happen. Daryl, is there a prayer that you can end off our session with? Um, a prayer for the children, a prayer for those Humanity. that came before us that is creating this activation through this shift that we're all collectively moving through a prayer for us as a humanity, a prayer for mother earth. Um, I can go on and on, but is there a prayer that kind of encapsulates the love and gratitude and appreciation? Yeah. Like, like I said in the beginning, when we do ceremony, we start off with giving thanks to all creation. 
So we thank Istad and Lagani, Radek Koa, your mother, father, great spirit. Radik Sogun, what Neganas Kanegadun, all the waters, all the streams, the rivers, Kajung Suma, all the fish life, Kurunda Suma, Dana Ogwe Suma, all the trees, the smaller trees, the saplings, Kurunda Suma, all the medicinal herbs. Give thanks to Ogwego. And Joko and Agon Hunja, all the people upon Mother Earth. A quadrate, a family. An old quadrate, a hostile, a love and a light. A guego gundidio, gunaruko, all the animals we offer them our love. They give us, they give us their bodies for clothing and for food. So when we offer our gratitude. The Tiso Togu, the Duer, that's the one in the Garahonius. You have an orange, the thunder, the lightning, the rain. Some kuachi, a jokanaka garako, our elder brother, the sun. You fill yourself up with golden light. It is what the woman there, none of the to our ancestors, who are passed down. It is what Togo Gahundi, no, 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 butter, oh, gumsa. The what's it at Gawas? All the great messengers, the grandfathers, could just as the grandmothers, the dragons, Tarun Hiwabu, the great spirit, the star, the Naragani, the core. You fill yourself up with light when you offer your gratitude to the great spirit. Asasthansa, the core, South here, the great natural power which runs through the universe. Close to us. So we thank you. And when we do ceremony, so we release everybody after and we say thank you. So in, in, in our language, we say, that means goodbye till the next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no, a lot of people, they just say, that's goodbye. It's not supposed to be like that because there's no goodbyes. It's like coming so we'll meet again. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Because we keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. Darryl. Yeah, it's been very brief, but in ceremony it goes on for much longer, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, Daryl, part of that is reminds me of what we do with our girls. I was thinking about that. Uh, almost every day. There's a yeah. moment either in the morning or before bed where snuggle time. Where we're snuggling with the with our girls, uh, three three and five. And um, there's a we go through and just say thank you to everything. So we look and thank you to the trees, thank, thank you, you to the, the mountains. mountains. And they just come up with whatever comes to mind. So it just goes on and on and thank you to the dolphins and thank you to the whales and they and Oh, oh, and the bald eagle and the hummingbird. And, <laughs> and it's a really sweet um, way to finish off our night. You're already incorporating that naturally, see? Mm -hmm. Your spirits know that. And the children love it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a ceremony with children. They love it, man. Their energy brings the whole place up. Yeah. You see? So they're, they're the ones with the woman that'll help bring us to heal the planet. Yeah. yeah. They're all... Thank you so much for uh, spending the time with us today and going through everything. Yeah, I wanted to actually, before we say we love you dearly, the other yeah. day you were mentioning um, what yeah. I love you means in your yeah. community. Can you describe yeah. that one more time for the audience? Yeah, it's gunarunkwa. <laughs> so these words I say to you come from my heart. They are medicine and I wrap my essence around you. So it's a big <laughs> hug, right? But that encompasses everything in creation. Yeah. So it's Mother Earth hugging us, us hugging Mother Earth and Great Spirit. So we're all, you know, that intertwined in that spirit energy. Yeah. Well, Daryl, we, we love you. Thank you. We love uh, you. We love, you. Just love you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so we'll much. Oh, take care. It's my pleasure. You as well. We'll talk soon. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Kimuria. <laughs> well, that was awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to invest in your health and well-being. Since this podcast is brand new, 
Reviews and subscribers are so vital for us to get off the ground and share this really important information. So if you found this information valuable, please post a review and subscribe to the podcast so you'll get our newest episodes. Also, if you know of someone who would benefit from this, please share it with them. You can also find us on Instagram at hashtag inspirehealthpodcast. If you have a question that you'd like to be addressed, direct message me on Instagram or leave a comment on one of my posts. I would love to hear from you. And you can grab our show notes and free resources for each episode at inspirehealthpodcast.com. So be sure to go online and check it out.